Hello, I'm Ron Davis. I'd like to tell you a, a, a little bit of a story about a recent publication involving a new uh, diagnostic device we call the nano needle. The history of this is that um, we wanted to develop a very small device for making measurements of either the proteins that were available or nucleic acids. And uh, this fabrication was done uh, at Stanford nanofabrication facility. It's a very small device, has a nano channel and, a, and uh, nano electrodes uh, that can measure electrical properties of, um, of molecules that are bound, or in this case of cells that are attached to the, uh, to, to the electrodes. Uh, uh, we first uh, thought that maybe we could get a measurement of uh, MECFS uh, white blood cells uh, if we stress them, that they might not be able to handle stress. And the stress we chose was just adding sodium chloride. Uh, the very first experiment worked, and then we began to pursue it. Uh, the problem with trying to develop a diagnostic test is that all of the patients you're sampling have to have the disease. And if you don't have a good diagnostic, you, you have a problem that maybe some of the patients actually don't have the disease. So it's hard to develop a new diagnostic test uh, because of the inability to maybe diagnose the patients. So we, we chose to, in fact, uh, make sure that uh, the patients met all the criteria for all the different diagnostic tests for MECFS. And we also required them to be seen by a specialist in MECFS, and then to validate that they were convinced that this person did have the disease. Uh, that would help us a great deal uh, in actually performing these tests. Uh, it's a very simple procedure. We, uh, we simply take a blood sample, uh, remo we remove the red cells, and then put a drop of blood on the detector. Uh, what was uh, really uh, surprising to us was that every patient shows uh, this, uh, the signal, uh, which is a change in impedance, but none of the healthy controls showed the same signal. And so that's what you really like, like to have in a diagnostic test. It's not uncommon to have a medical uh, approved diagnostic test to have as much as a 10% false positive and a 10% false negative. In our case, we found no false positives and no false negatives. We will continue this work. Uh, what we were trying to do at the very beginning was to distinguish MECFS patients from healthy controls. And the reason for that really is to say that if you get a signal, you're not healthy. And we thought that was probably the most important thing we could do first. Second phase is to try to figure out how to diagnose that it is MECFS and not some other uh, related disease. That's going to take some time because we have to look through a lot of large number of other diseases, uh, but that is proceeding at the moment. In the future, uh, we have we will use this uh, device for a number of things. Uh, we are already using it for uh, doing other types of diagnostics that don't involve cells, but in fact involve molecules. Uh, the other thing we can use this device for is to see if we can block the effects that we see in the nanoidal assay uh, with a drug. This then is a drug that might have some benefit to the patients. Uh, we also like to explore why are we seeing the signal. Uh, we have a lot of ideas, uh, but we haven't really uh, validated any of them to be the, the real cause of this signal. In the future, um, we would like to set up uh, this assay to be much higher throughput. Uh, the device you see here behind me uh, can do two samples at the same time. Uh, we really need to uh, increase that throughput. That means redesigning it. We possibly can use the same chip or we'll do a, a new design of the chip. Uh, we uh, manufacture the chips here at Stanford. Uh, Rahim, who is the first author on this publication, 
has recently moved to the University of California at Irvine, uh, where he is now an assistant professor. Uh, we will continue to work together on this development.